We close with a brief discussion of three important issues uh, pertaining to the use of the statistic. First, as I've already mentioned a couple of times, there's this problem of multiple comparisons. So in the uh, conditional permutation, the pseudo p-value that results for a given location is done just for that location, and it does not take into account that all the other locations are also being analyzed, and in fact, that the given location is a neighbor of its neighbors. And uh, I am my neighbor's neighbor. I, I've mentioned this a couple of times. This uh, creates a lot of dependencies between the local tests and the simple pseudo p-value, in fact, ignores that. So we know um, right off the bat that these individual p-values are not going to be right. Even though they're just pseudo p-values, even at that, they're not correct. And so they're overly optimistic. They're too low. In the literature, there's quite a bit of literature actually on this problem of multiple comparisons. And there are a number of uh, corrections that have been suggested. Some of them are bounds. Some of them are ways to deal with the multiples. Uh, Bonferroni bounds and false discovery rate corrections are the most known of these, but none of these are totally satisfactory. And um, the Bonferroni bounds, for example, correct by the number of comparisons. So if you do a local analysis on 3,000 some U.S. counties, uh, you would have to divide uh, your target p-value by 3,000 to have the actual value that you would use for each individual comparison. And the question then arises, should it really be 3,000 or should it be a smaller value, maybe the number of neighbors or the average number of neighbors? And so none of this is actually very uh, good. My uh, recommendation and my rule of thumb in practice is just to be cautious and uh, by all means don't get too excited when you get a p-value of 0.05. On the other hand, as we've seen when we compare the different maps of the clusters and also the core of the cluster together with the neighbors, at the end of the day they all seem to point to the, in the same direction. So even if you take a much more stringent uh, p-value such as maybe p.001 if you add the neighbors to the cluster's cores, then you end up with something that's very similar to the indication given at a higher p-value. So uh, the rule is to be cautious, is to do sensitivity analysis, and is to be aware that these p-values, first of all, they're only pseudo p-values, so they're not really the real thing to begin with, but also, they only give you an approximate sense of the significance. However, if you find p-values that are 0 0.0001, then um, there can be a fair degree of confidence that you're onto something. Now, whether the degree of uncertainty as measured by the p-value is exactly what you have there, uh, that almost surely is not the case. What it is exactly is also, also almost surely impossible to determine. So that's the first issue to keep in mind. The second issue is this, uh, not to make too much of it, again, this is just an exploratory technique. The clusters and the outliers are identified, but they don't actually explain anything. And it's important to keep in mind what we discussed earlier, also for the global spatial order correlation me measures, that uh, the cluster detection is about pattern. And explaining what is actually going on is about process. And multiple processes can yield the same pattern. And from just identifying the pattern, you can't really say anything or you can't say everything about the process. And we saw this in the context of pure against apparent contagion, where in fact just identifying clustering, or in our case just identifying a cluster, is insufficient to be able to, ident 
to uh, draw the conclusion which of the two processes might have yielded this cluster. What it does do, though, is exp especially in an exploratory spirit following the ideas of Tukey, is that it does suggest entering lo interesting locations. Interesting locations which then should prompt you to look at other relationships and other variables that might potentially lead you to formal hypotheses which can then be incorporated in actual modeling. So multiple comparisons, exploratory only, and then the final one, it's, it's univariate, uh, these clusters. <clears throat> they can be due to interaction effect with other covariants. And that is something that is always the case when you deal with a univariate statistic. It ignores multivariate interactions. And there's another aspect to this that um, scale mismatch can often create the impression of clusters that are actually um, they're there, but they're there because of data issues. There's no substantive, meaningful process interpretation. And an, an example that you often run into is with the analysis of housing markets. And I mentioned this often as a classic example. If you look at housing developments in the U.S. Southwest or in California, very often these developments are done in cohorts and thousands of houses are built at the same time and they're all the same. So if you do a local spatial autocorrelation analysis of the characteristics of these houses, you will find uh, out of this world high positive spatial autocorrelation. And so you will ident identify these clusters that are basically the same as the development. So for an analysis, the scale of the individual house in that case is too small because there is insufficient variation, insufficient variability to draw meaningful conclusions at that scale. So in that sense, um, the um, clusters that you identify are maybe misleading in that they give you a sense that there is something going on, but in fact, it's a scale issue, it's a data issue. And uh, by the same token, that means that these clusters, the detection of these clusters could suggest to you that you actually do have a scale uh, mismatch issue when you have very large clusters with very high positive spatial autocorrelation, then there's something lacking, as we know, from the initial discussion of spatial autocorrelation, uh, high positive spatial autocorrelation implies a loss of information, which is translated in insufficient variability, which doesn't allow you to explain very much. So that's another side of the coin uh, to keep in mind. Next, we'll cover how to deal with proportions or rates.